So I thought I'd do a brief history of early Bitcoin companies because I think there is inspiration to be taken. I think there are some lessons to be learned. And also I think there are at least a couple of parallels with where we're sitting today in 2022 in the Bitcoin lightning ecosystem. Um, and just before we start, so all these companies are formed years in advance of the Bitcoin price ever reaching $200, right? So uh, today the Bitcoin price is $20,000. All of these companies, I would argue, played a big role in getting the Bitcoin ecosystem off the ground and as a proxy that Bitcoin price moving up. Um, so, so yeah, the brief timeline. 2008 is obviously when Satoshi released the first client in the white paper. The first exchange that got real traction was Mt. Gox in 2010. Um, so an exchange is just um, a website or a service that allows you to swap or exchange your fiat currencies for Bitcoin. Um, so your dollars, your euros, your pounds, etc. Um, up until then, it wasn't really clear that Bitcoin had a market price and so people were quite happy just to give out large amounts of Bitcoin for nothing or buy pizzas with thousands of Bitcoin. Um, so this was the first, and I would argue, partially successful attempt to get people buying Bitcoin online um, and actually prove that there's the demand and, um, and the, uh, there's a viable business there. There's an, ex an exchange business model. Now, Mt. Gox, Gox collapsed, um, and was certainly not a template for how to run a business or how to run a secure uh, service. But the exchanges that came um, in the next couple of years, the Krakens, the Coinbases, um, they kind of learned the lessons from um, the mistakes Mt. Gox made. They, they took security a lot more seriously. They provided a much better user experience. It was a lot easier for non-technical people to use their website, and it was very, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was like a conventional website that we used to go into Facebook and Twitter, etc. So they did in, they did amazing work back then um, to take Mt. Gox to like a professional level. Um, obviously, uh, year, in the years following, they've invested a lot of developer resources um, and marketing focus on alternative cryptocurrencies, altcoins, tokens, NFTs, what I would argue all this rubbish um, and it means that they haven't been focusing on um, continuing to build and leverage the Bitcoin technology that's available. So obviously that's a shame but there's an opportunity there for exchanges that come later who can focus on Bitcoin and can focus on building the best experience for buying, securely storing um, and in interacting with Bitcoin. So the, uh, let's see, there's the exchanges, um, obviously lots more exchanges, I can't list all the exchanges that ever existed. Um, so, so the next really important product um, for the Bitcoin ecosystem was the hardware wallet, the hardware sign, the hardware device. And the three companies that really pushed this forward, initially it was Trezor, but um, Ledger, Ledger and uh, CoinKite with their cold card device came later. And having, bringing this device to market was really important because you don't want to be storing keys for large amounts of money on your laptop that you're downloading whatever you're downloading, <laughs> potentially clicking on uh, dodgy websites. Um, keeping the keys um, on a very limited hardware device that isn't used for anything other than signing um, was a really important uh, product to bring to market and had uh, and certainly taken security to the next level um, for Bitcoin storage. So. So yeah, huge, hugely important companies for bringing hardware wallets to market. 
Um, there have obviously been other products uh, following it, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick with early companies uh, for this. Um, Blockstream was formed in 2014. I would argue Blockstream has had the biggest impact um, in terms of uh, Bitcoin and Lightning development. Um, when it was founded, <coughs> a large number of the founders were Bitcoin core contributors. Um, that's changed over time, but there's still pumping out all sorts of amazing research and um, development projects, uh, too many to name. Um, maybe I'll do a separate video on Blockstream. Uh, 21, a really interesting company. Um, they went down the exchange route of trying to encourage people to buy alternatives to Bitcoin. But around 2013, 2014, they're doing interesting things with regards to paid APIs and uh, selling devices to help you uh, mine Bitcoin. Um, and they have tons of really cool developer docs, documentation. So I was a big fan of 21 back then until they pivoted to, to the alternative to Bitcoin, alternative blockchain stuff things. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I could do a video on, on each of those companies. There's lots, lots more I could say. Um, but just to try and keep this video short, so as I said, all of these companies formed well before the price ever reached close to $200 per Bitcoin. The parallels with today, um, we've kind of had some like Bitcoin price stagnation. Like today, the price is $20,000. Five years ago, the price peaked at $20,000 per Bitcoin. Um, and also, um, we're still very early with regards to the Lightning paper, perhaps with, with, with Lightning, we are around where we were 2011-2012 for base chain, on chain. In 2022, we're kind of where we were back then with regards to Lightning. Um, a lot more work to do to get users, to get companies, to get an ecosystem built on top of the Lightning network. Um, so still very, very early. And I would certainly argue that if and when there is ever is another massive price spike and everyone's going crazy trying to buy Bitcoin, um, that we'll need to have this ecosystem built out on top of Lightning for whenever that happens, if that happens. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of lessons learned, I would say hodling isn't enough. I think at least a subset of these companies, and for all these companies, brought the ecosystem forward and got people comfortable buying Bitcoin and storing Bitcoin. Um, and I think without that, if, if all you care about is hodling and Bitcoin price, I don't think we would have got to the levels that we've got to today. You do need that ecosystem. You do need products and services available to um, to get people comfortable um, entering and engaging in this ecosystem. And I think we'll need a bunch more companies today to achieve that with that second layer, with that lightning stuff. And there's other second layer protocols, perhaps they might grow as well, who knows. Um, but yeah, early Bitcoin businesses, really important. Um, did some really cool things. Some are still around today, so some are still thriving businesses. Um, others are perhaps doing well financially, but um, ethically there's a bit of a question mark with some of the crazy stuff they're pushing or pushing onto their users. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that.